All right. So I am Beth from the certification department at CanFit Pro. Welcome. We are just so pleased to have you here at Big Lifts to Body Weights. We have Russell Peel here. He's going to talk to us about yeah. transitioning our workouts to at home with body weight exercises. So Russell has a great deal of information to share and a lot of credibility as a trainer. He's a CanFit Pro personal training specialist, pro trainer. So he actually teaches our certification programs. He works out of gym movement in Calgary, Alberta. So I'm going to just pass it over to Russell in one minute. First, a couple housekeeping things as people are still coming in. This is being recorded. So we will have a replay link available to you tomorrow. So watch your email for the replay link. There's also a CEC quiz available. So if you need some continuing education credits, go ahead and you can log into your CanFit Pro member portal tomorrow and grab that CEC quiz based on Russell's information that he's sharing today. It's $30 plus tax. And uh, there is only Russell and myself on video. None of our attendees are on video. You're all muted. So don't worry about being part of the presentation. He's going to take questions and at the end. So if you have questions, you can use the Q&A box found in Zoom and you can put your questions in there or you can also write them in the chat. So um, with that, I will pass it over to Russell. Awesome. Well, nice to have you all join me. Um, pretty excited. This is my first webinar. So um, when I was asked to do it, uh, I was kind of uh, a little taken back and then I decided, well, wow, this is a pretty awesome opportunity. Um, watched a few other presenters and decided, well, wow, this is going to be fun. So uh, you're looking at me. Uh, this is actually a green screen. So one of the last presenters that, that I attended her seminar, Natalie, she was talking about how to do some online business and, and how to make your, basically your home office more, um, entertaining and, and um, she went over how to get a green screen and it was really quite simple and so I was able to this is actually a picture of my my gym in my house so um, not to make you guys all jealous that's a giant squat rack in the back lots of weights but today we're gonna focus on one thing because a lot of you um, do not have the ability to you know lift heavy weights and I get that and don't be, you know, don't be alarmed. It's not the end of the world, as we're going to go over today. Um, it's actually a good thing for you, um, believe it or not. So uh, I basically made a presentation um, on my computer here with PowerPoint. So it's going to make it a little easier to follow. And uh, there's some media attached. So it should be um, a little less boring than your normal PowerPoint, I hope. And you can still see me in the corner there. Um, and I'll be doing some commentary on some of the videos that I have. So let's get started. So uh, my name is Russell Peel. Uh, here's a couple of headshots of me. I just wanted to say um, part of what, you know, what I am uh, throughout my life, what I've become is uh, number one, I was an, a martial artist um to begin with uh, and i lived in japan for quite some time i'm going to go over that so i have a picture of me holding some pads there um, i live for this stuff um mixed martial arts kickboxing and i have a black belt in full contact karate kyokushin style and uh judo so it's really created who i am today so i'm really proud of those things and um just wanted to display that also um, for the last, I'd say seven years, I've been building up my strength and for the last three or four years, I've been um, competing competitively in powerlifting. So there's a little headshot of me with some heavy weights in the back. I can actually squat that much. So I'm not just faking. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's move on. Oh, geez. Look at this. So <clears throat> where it all began for me, um, 
you know, I was a, as a young kid, I was always um, thick, so to speak. Um, so, uh, you know, it was just the way I was built. And, you know, you can imagine as a young kid, <clears throat> you can get picked on. But I kind of took that as um, an empowerment. And one of my first things that I wanted as a kid was a weight set. I remember this moment. It was actually on my birthday, I believe. I'm 10 years old here. And this is my lovely assistant, uh, my sister Robin. She's posing in the back like Marilyn Monroe. Um, this is not a trailer park. It's uh, actually um, uh, a, a cabin that we rented in, in Sycamus on Merrill Lake. But uh, I remember going to a used uh, goods store and finding this weeder bench or wider bench. And I just told my dad, I need this. We need this. So I got that. And I think a few years later, there's the other picture of me. I got a little, a little thicker. But I didn't really know what I didn't really know what I was doing, and you know, one of my main inspirations back in those days was you know, WWE, all those uh, you know crazy movies with Arnold and Stallone. I am dating myself. Um, I'm 40 years old, so back when I was a kid, that was a cool thing, and we didn't know anything different. So I just wanted to play this little video for you. I knew exactly how you felt about me, macho man. At this point, I was letting everything slide, brother. I was just hoping that that cancer that was tearing you apart might go into remission, that everything was straightened itself out. All right, out. that's enough for you, Hulk. Okay, so, yeah, that kind of sums up my childhood. Um, you know, back in those days, we didn't know much about, you know, lifting weights. There wasn't the internet. Um, there was the, the Arnold Encyclopedia. And then some, some wrestling magazines and stuff like that. So those are kind of the heroes back in the day. And um, uh, I don't know how many of you were, were like me, but uh, yeah, I think it was a pretty awesome time back in those days. But, uh, but now we're in, in the information era and, you know, anybody can access anything on the internet in terms of training. So that's pretty awesome. Um, if I were the kid I was back then, who knows what I could do now. Um, if you look at it that way, but so the younger generation definitely has an advantage to become a better athlete, in my opinion. So I kind of skipped from my childhood, boom, all the way to 2002. I was going to entertain showing you some pictures from my high school and uh, in my university days, but that would be uh, probably a bad idea. Let's just say Jersey Shore was definitely in full uh, effect. <laughs> um, so 2002, um, I graduated um, university and sorry, I drink a lot of water, giant water bags. So bear with me while I chug my two liter bottle. Um, 2002, uh, I graduated university. My buddy calls me. He says, I'm going to Japan teaching English. You should come with me. Um, at the time, I was starting a career I didn't really want to, to be involved with. I was 22. I wanted to go traveling. So I said, sure. I applied for the job, got it. Within a few months, I was heading my way to Japan. And uh, it was a very exciting and also scary time because I didn't speak Japanese. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just getting on a plane to a different land. And, and when I got there, boy, it was a different land. I mean, there's no you know, people speak English there, but no one's going out of their way to, um, you know, put signs up for you or whatnot. Everything's in Japanese. So it was quite a, an awesome time, exciting. I look back on those memories very fondly. This is one of my favorite pictures. Um, it was actually a, uh, after a school lunch at an elementary school in Japan. And awesome thing about Japanese schools they don't have janitors. Um, the kids clean the school, kids and teachers. So after lunch, roughly 15 minutes or so, the, the entire um, student body and teachers all clean the school. And it, you'd be amazed what, you know, 500 to 1,000 people can do in 15 minutes. So, you know, that's one thing I loved about Japan was just the, how their community and working together and they really tighten it that way. So it was pretty awesome. While I was there, <clears throat> um, 
that's when my formal martial arts journey began. Um, you can see on the, the older newspaper article there, that's me. Um, I just won the 2005 All-State Hokkaido Championship. Right there, it says my name, Peel Champion. So it was a very proud moment for me to, this is probably after three or four years of training. I'd say three years, yeah, three years, 2005. So I, I picked up the sport quite quickly and then I got thrown into the meat grinder. Um, the guy on the far, far left is actually, he was the, the, the champion in Japan, um, number one ranked and he was my sparring partner every day. So that was pretty, pretty awesome getting beat up for a few years until I could actually fight back. But that's how you learn. And then that brought me to uh, after um, 2005, I believe 2006, I moved from the top North Island to near Tokyo in a city called Mito. And I started training um, for kickboxing. And then that was my professional debut as a kickboxer in K1 rules. So that was an awesome time. And while I was there, um, you know, I got to train with some awesome Japanese fighters. Um, the guy on the far right, Sakurai, he's my mentor and my sensei, and um, one of the most famous Japanese fighters. In fact, he's still fighting at 48. He won a belt um, in December. So he's an amazing guy. And I get a lot of energy from him because he shows that age is only a number. You can still keep on achieving your goals no matter what. I mean, last year I was able to achieve a pretty awesome goal and I, I turned 40. So don't let age be a, a determiner of your ability or what you can do. Um, yeah, well, you might notice who that guy in the middle is. That's John Jones. Um, <laughs> It was pretty awesome training with him. That was in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I trained with a bunch of UFC guys back in 2009. Um, flew out there with uh, Mr. Sakurai and coach Greg Jackson, who's probably one of the most famous coaches in the world. So I got to learn and train with these, these amazing athletes and that really fueled my passion to become a trainer and a coach. I remember running in the mountains with Greg and, and you know, quizzing him on his, his kind of mentality and focus as a coach. And at that moment I knew, you know, this is what I want to do. I don't want to go back to a normal uh, job as, you know, some guy in an office punching a keyboard. I'm sure all of you are like that. Um, boom, 2013, I moved back to Calgary. That's when I started as a, a MMA coach. And then ultimately um, through my certification with CanFit Pro, I became uh, a personal trainer at a pretty awesome uh, gym, uh, currently known as Gym Movement. And um, from there, I, I could have a lot of uh, uh, chances to meet awesome clients and also some continuing education there. It's been an amazing experience. Um, they've helped me cut my teeth as a trainer, which I'm very happy about. So thanks to that. Um, I've been able to you know, hit a lot of accolades in that realm as well as a personal trainer. Um, so I've always been pushing my limits. Um, probably my most recent top uh, thing that I've done is uh, I've become a world champion in powerlifting in 100% raw federation. So <clears throat> there's some uh, pictures of me. Uh, that was in October of last year. So they actually had it in Calgary, which was very convenient. So that was pretty awesome. Um, so once again, always pushing my limits and um, it's been a really awesome time. However, you know, I really, um, I don't like talking about myself so much. You might not think that right now, but I just wanted to give you guys a good intro of me. What I take pride in is my clients and um, what I've been able to um, do to help people as a trainer. That's my biggest thing. And um, this crazy looking guy right here is Eric. And Eric uh, came into my life around 2015, I believe. 15, 16, I believe 15. So roughly five years ago. <clears throat> and after, the, I'm gonna show a video because we're here to learn some body weight exercises for sure. 
Um, but he, he's gone from a guy, I'm going to show you the after pictures and before pictures, but he's made significant uh, impact in his life. And he became a, an MMA, MMA champion last year. Very proud of him. And so I told him I'm doing this webinar and I wanted to film some workouts for you guys that are a little out of the box, more MMA style. Okay. So, um, I know you probably Googled and YouTube every exercise there is out there and you probably Instagrammed all these people doing their home exercises, but I wanted to give you a couple of different, um, outlooks and this workout can be done, um, while you're at your, your house and you probably don't need a, a space bigger than 10 foot by 10 foot to do all these. So, um, just a little bit of a, an aid here, and then we're going to go on some other things you can do um, to, you know, push yourself in these times where we can't be in a gym. So, that being said, um, I'm going to run some commentary a little bit um, about these exercises when I chime in on, on a few things. They're pretty self-explanatory, but here we go. Just gonna crank down the volume a bit. Um, so there we go. Um, the first part, we're gonna focus on upper body. So I broke it down into upper body, lower body, core, and then some MMA combos for conditioning. So as we go into this, um, <clears throat> you know, without a pull-up bar, we're kind of limited what we can do. Um, but not too limited, but with push-ups, you know, you have so many variations that you can do to hit different parts. What I might say is just don't think of a push-up as something that hits your chest. It's not, it's, it's like when you do bench press for powerlifting. I primarily use my back more than my chest. I don't have a huge chest, but you know, you use a lot of your arms and back. So this is a, almost a full body movement, right? Well, it is. And <clears throat> so when you do very vari variations like these, you can really hit most of your muscle groups in your entire body. Um, but mostly the upper body focus. I'm going more into some shoulder stuff. These look easy, but they're really hard, especially when you slow them down a bit. So I would, probably break this down into um, doing some sets of, I would probably do 30 seconds each exercise, run it on a timer, do 30, go into the next one. Cause then you're looking at 10 exercises. So that's about a five minute round. So that's similar to an MMA round. So that's really going to get you burning. So I would, I would go into that. Maybe I would do, you know, <clears throat> three five minute rounds and then I would go into uh, lower body. So here we go. A little bit of an MMA twist on those. <clears throat> so I, what I wanted to tell you during this is when I was in Japan, um, a lot of this training that I did was similar to this it, it's just repetitious over and over again doing the same movement and <clears throat> and I hate to say it but that's how you build um, technique and that's how you get better at things you know the 10,000 time rule 10,000 hours or whatever you want to say it's putting in that time so <clears throat> the more repetitions you can do the better um, right so I'm just trying to hit all, all parts of our our legs and lower body here. Um, also, we're trying to be dexterous. <clears throat> so we're trying to um, be able to move in a way that's functional as well, right? So <clears throat> part of the thing of lifting heavy, and I'm guilty of this, is your mobility goes out the window usually. Um, when you're a, a, a big guy like me right now, I weigh roughly 350 pounds. <clears throat> It's quite difficult to move around, so I can do most of these, but I just wanted to have my uh, protege do them. You don't want to see me flopping around on the, <laughs> on the mats. Um, 
but these are awesome exercises to do to just to get your conditioning. Now we're moving into the core. Um, a lot of these you might have seen, but probably some of them are, have an MMA twist on like right here. We're actually tucking and clinching. Um, yeah, it was a little hard for me to do with the, the Boza ball belly I have, <laughs> but uh, hip get up. A lot of these are, are very good uh, movements for everyday life as well, right? Um, getting up off the ground without kind of doing the old man get up where you roll off onto your, your hands and knees and then prop yourself up, right? So just keeping agile um, is important. Okay. So a little variation of a plank there. Just learning how to be functional. These are actually more of a grappling uh, warm up, but I just call them break dancers. These, I can actually do better than Eric. They're very difficult, but you want to try not to use your, your elbows or any kind of arm movement. And I think we're going to finish it off pretty quick here with the abs. This is generating power with our legs to get up into the turtle position, but also an awesome core exercise. All right, some MMA combos. So here what we're doing is too slow and then too fast. So this uh, video is going to be available on my YouTube page. So feel free to go back and, and you can pause it and you can <clears throat> um, view it that way. Um, I know it might seem easy for Eric, but these are easy combos. Um, so definitely um, take your time, try to mimic. One thing you got to look at when you're punching and kicking, <clears throat> where you're probably not looking at right now is the feet. So a lot of <clears throat> martial arts, is all in the hips and the, the way you use your hips. And that involves a lot of pivoting with your feet to generate power. So, um, and depending on whether you're kickboxing or doing MMA, it, it's different because with kickboxing, you're not worried about getting taken down. So sometimes you might not pivot as heavy. All right, the good old sprawl. I'd much rather do these than burpees. They kind of look cooler and and they're basically a movement to avoid a, a wrestling takedown. If someone's trying to grab your legs. These are, are tricky. Any kind of switch movement where we're going to switch with the left leg, we're going to switch it back and then drive it forward. But I've had people and clients, you know, learn these and have the most hardest time because it's kind of a, it's really uh, mind boggling for your brain to pick up some of this stuff. And especially with judo, which I, I, I've trained quite a bit in, everything almost seems backwards. Your, your footwork and everything it goes against everything you've learned. So um, yeah, shout out to my, my friend VJ. He's probably out there watching, former judo champion in Canada. Um, texted me from Vancouver. He's gonna attend this uh, webinar. So, all right, that was, my body weight video and boom here we go you might not be able to believe that but on the far left there that's eric um i cut off most of that picture but uh i believe he has about five tacos in his hand <laughs> he's about to go on go uh, munch it down and uh that was how excited he was to eat but uh, to be fair, that was when I first met him. He was about 260 pounds, and that's what he looked like. He, he was following some bodybuilding routines, but obviously didn't follow nutrition too, <laughs> too uh, um, clearly. But when I started training him, we worked on cutting that stuff out. And one thing he had was just this work ethic that, you know, he didn't quit for nobody. So, um, and if you look in the middle... So a few years back, we cut him down to, that's 185 pounds for one of his MMA fights. <clears throat> and then go on to far right picture, that's him as the uh, Canadian champion 
amateur MMA Canadian champion at 205 pounds last year. So very proud of this kid, taking him from, from a zero to hero, basically. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's been an awesome journey. So um, clients like him really fuel me. Uh, let's move on. All right, so kind of the visual part's over. Now we're gonna get into more of a classroom discussion. Um, and so I, I find that, you know, uh, the biggest thing you can do right now <clears throat> is uh, a mindset shift. So accepting the reality of the situation. You know, at first we didn't know it was happening, no one did. Um, you know, we all, everything had to get shut down, especially gyms. Um, and then unfortunately, you know, gyms, giant places where people congregate and probably, you know, up until now, haven't really worried about their hygiene too much. So that's been a, a big worry, right? <clears throat> so we have to accept the reality of the situation. So if you're, you know, if you're a competitive lifter, bodybuilder, sports person or whatnot, and, you know, lifting heavy weights is really part of your regimen, you know, that might not be something you can do right now. What are you going to do about that? Well, that's actually a good thing because, <clears throat> you know, um, you got to focus more on uh, the off season mentality. So, and this is something you should do every year regardless. And a lot of us don't. Um, I've been in a grind for probably the last four, four or five years where I may have taken a few deload weeks here and there, but I haven't really, um, taking time off from training and you know you hit plateaus and so taking a mind shift into okay this is my off season now what can I do and what is off season training well gives your body uh, a much needed time for rest by giving it a different stimulus right um, so you know obviously we can't <laughs> train at, at a high, high rate with, um, with weights. So we have our body weight movements um, that we're kind of focusing on today. And with that, we can uh, definitely make an impact on our, our gener general physical shape, right? So um, it allows us to focus on weak points. And I'm sure we all have these nagging injuries that have been bugging us. So trying to rehab those, you know, um, giving your body a break to do that which is pretty, pretty awesome. We don't really get a chance to, you know, sit at home all day. <laughs> uh, not so much now, but when the first happened, you know, we didn't, we couldn't really leave our houses too much. So um, <clears throat> definitely giving our, ch our uh, a chance to work on those injuries. And also we can work on our work capacity and ability to train harder um, with our conditioning, which will pay dividends in the future. <laughs> Um, so we're looking at uh, a greater focus on your conditioning or in uh, the strength training world, we use the acronym GPP, general physical preparedness, and that should be implemented. And what that looks like a lot, a lot of times in strength training is using implements, um, such as, uh, sleds uh, that we can pull and push yokes, carries, farmers carries. We do a lot of that for strength and conditioning in, in powerlifting and I, I think strongman as well. Well, strongman is, is all that put together. They're always in condition. So, um, so we need to you know, do that a little more. We can do that right now. Um, so let's focus on those things. And let's focus on the positive and the variables that you can control. Right. Um, you know, although it's been a terrible thing to happen, you know, and it's unprecedented with the, with this COVID-19 situation, um, I think we can look at some very positive things that have happened as well. Um, for me, especially um, having more time with your family and being home. Um, when we get into the grind of things, sometimes we forget about, you know, things that matter most. <laughs> um, and, you know, you're being at home with your family, 
It's pretty awesome. Um, I got a dog. I can spend time with her, take her for some awesome walks. So it's been nice to be at home. Also, you know, work on some projects at home that I've been putting off or I'm just too tired to do because I'm working so much. So um, that's been pretty cool. Um, I like that part. Uh, some other parts I don't like. I don't like being quarantined and trapped and isolating from friends and family, not being able to give my dad a hug. You know, those, those are the hard things. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, what are the variables you can control? Well, you know, some big ones that you may not have had a chance like this in recent uh, times where you can control things like your sleep. Um, proper sleep, getting that seven to eight hours, sometimes even more for, you know, some athletes. Um, my sensei in Japan, Sakurai, would sleep 10 hours a day just to recover. He needed that. Um, and um, we have that option right now. So we can also take some naps and stuff like that. So that's been pretty awesome, controlling your sleep, which is um, allowing your body to be running optimally um, and repairing itself as long as you've been training uh, and not repairing from the, the pizza you crushed last night, but that's okay every now and then. <clears throat> but nutrition is also a, a very um, a big part that we can control right now. So, uh, I mean, I'm lucky enough to have a, an awesome wife that's a five-star chef basically, and she prepares a lot of my meals. Up until now though, I've been doing a lot of meal prep. I've been following kind of the vertical diet from Stan Efferding. So very simplified, you know, eating a lot of the same thing for all your meals. Um, so now might be a good time to focus in and dial that in. Um, focus on what you're eating. Or maybe there's something that you wanted to try um, up until now that you're kind of worried. I don't think I can do that if I have to go to work. Like intermittent fasting, where you think you might be hangry and rip someone's head off. Well, you can try to do that at home where you have less stress. Um, some might even want to try, you know, something like a keto diet or paleo diet. Whatever it is, you know, becoming a vegetarian. Who knows? Try something new. You're in control of that. Another thing you're in control of is your frequency uh, of training. Uh, you can do, easily do, two, two workout sessions a day. Um, you know, I would break it into more of a block. You know, when I was uh, training as a fighter, we would do a morning practice and then evening practice every day. Um, and so you would want to split those up with a nice uh, nap in between. But, but yeah, it, it's definitely your control of your frequency and what you can do. So I think it's awesome to be in control of those variables where we're not actually able to control those so much when we're in our daily grind so you know when you're out there hustling working are you able to sleep those seven to eight hours can you take a nap can you get the, enough food in you and can you work out as much as you want I, I don't think so especially as a trainer even though it seems like we work in a gym and we should be able to work out all day long well if you're a busy trainer that doesn't happen and sometimes we got to squeeze it in at the end of the day or the beginning of the day. And, you know, even then, that being said, people are on the floor coming up to you and, and disturbing you and getting advice and stuff like that. So you might not be able to get that awesome workout you were hoping for. So now that we have uh, those variables to control, I think that's a good thing, you know, and we might be able to make some gains that way. Okay, so I do apologize for the, um, the text being so small, but um, you don't have to read that. You can always go back to this. It, it'll be online with uh, CanFit Pro, and I'm also probably gonna put it on my, um, my YouTube channel as well. Um, and if you ever need to get a hold of me, I'll give you my contact info at the end. No, nothing too big. Mostly, uh, they, these are things that you're very aware of as a trainer, but maybe you haven't thought of it or just a little bit of a re uh, review. So can some concepts and variations to make your workout situations a little more difficult. 
and stimulating. So uh, we have number one here, accommodating resistance. So uh, this involved the usage of an added piece of equipment, generally bands or, or chains, and to increase the resistance of the load throughout the range of motion. So um, I'm gonna cut out chains here. <laughs> Most of us don't have chains laying around in our house, hopefully, but um, everybody's got bands, maybe not. But they're easy to acquire, um, a little harder on Amazon right now, but you can generally get uh, a nice set of bands. Um, what I mean by bands are, you know, the, the, the typical ones used, uh, we have our green, our purple and our, our red, and then it goes up to blue. But I, if you could get a set of two greens, two purples and, and two reds, you're laughing. That's all you need. Um, but using those to make your workouts a little tougher or variations of your workouts, it's pretty awesome. Um, there's tons of workouts out there with bands you can check out. I, uh, I definitely um, would like you to check those out. Um, I might be making a bit of a, a band workout and some different variations and I'll be putting a video up on that in the near future, so stay tuned. Um, so, for example, we, you could go outside and tie a band to a pole quite easily. From there, you, could, you can do some sprints, you know, full speed sprints all the way to the band, pulls you back, run back, you know, that's great for explosiveness. Um, you tie it to a tree as well. Uh, if you're training with your quarantine partner, um, you know, having some partner assisted band stuff like sprints, uh, there's tons of stuff you can do with a band to make your workouts a little harder. So start using those if you can. I know it's not exactly body weight, but it's something you can implement, right? And try to get those, they're quite um, cheap and you can get them online and delivered to your house quite easy. Another concept, um, the concept of isometrics. So um, there's kind of a broad term and then more um, specific to strength training, but um, it's a system of physical exercises in which muscles are caused to act against each other or against a fixed object. So um, a static movement. So just to give your, just to, for you to, to relate, something like a, a wall sit or a plank, that's, that's, a, that's a definition of kind of isometric movement where you're just trying to keep a position and then your muscles are fighting against each other to try to keep you in that position, right? And then if any of you have tried, try doing a wall sit for a minute. That's, you know, that's a hard thing to do. So um, those are variations of isometric movement. Um, more specific to, uh, for strength training, um, one of my favorite uh, guys out there in the strength training world, uh, Josh Bryant, um, he's wrote, written several books, but his most famous is uh, Jailhouse Strong. And um, it's not glorifying the jailhouse, but basically learning how, how to get strong and, and, and jacked basically by doing body weight exercises where you might not be able to have equipment where you know, you're in a situation like a jail. So that's kind of how he goes into his book and how he, um, Eventually, you know, you'll get things that you can use, including weights, but when you don't have those, what can you do, right? And that's pretty awesome. That's kind of, you know, along the lines of the way I think. So I like that quite a bit. But one of his big things is um, doing isometric uh, bench press and deadlift type movements where you're basically pushing against an, uh, an object that you cannot move. So you can do the easily mimic these outside. Um, you know, if you had a, a dowel or a stick or a, a shovel or a broom in your shed, you know, pushing against something as hard as you can, um, grabbing a towel uh, or I like to use a martial arts belt. You can use a belt that you might not want to use later. Um, getting into a deadlift position and then pulling you know, standing on the belt and pulling as hard as you can for, you know, five to 10 seconds, not too long, but short durations. And, and you know, you're going to almost 100% of 
what you can pull. So that's another way to kind of get that stimulus, which is good. Um, all right. <clears throat> Just going to go into some more stuff. Uh, high intensity interval training. You're mostly, probably all of you are familiar with this. Um, short periods of intense anaerobic exercise with short rest periods. Um, one of the most common you're probably familiar with is a Tabata. And uh, that would be, you know, uh, 20 seconds of work, 10 rest, eight rounds. And, and when you have a similar time frame like that, you can change the times, the rounds, and the rest. But using concepts like that um, really help uh, improve our conditioning all around. Uh, commonly, CrossFit is mostly HIT training, and you might have heard of other uh, terms such as the EMOM, AMRAP. I'll let you go um, Google those if you don't know what those are. And then, you know, what are the benefits of this high intensity training? Well, obviously the more intense we train, um, you know, that's gonna push our limit more. So um, I believe that, you know, high intensity training forces your body to burn more calories. And also after the fact, after you're done working out, you're burning more calories for up to two hours. It also increases your VO2 max. So great training there. You don't need much. You could do sprints. You could do, you know, wall, walls, or sorry, uh, hill sprints. Very easy, but training at a high intensity. Um, so when we're um, training at these high intensities, I just wanted to review our energy systems. Um, so if you desire to maintain explosiveness, then um, we need to, you know, remember the importance of our energy systems and trying to stay within the time frame when performing our reps. Uh, so, keeping your training uh, intensity high at eighty to one hundred percent using our ATP CP um, kind of energy phase, less than one to fifteen seconds per set, will ensure that you maintain this explosiveness, right? Um, so. Yeah, I'm not saying don't go out there if you're a jogger or you're, you're a runner. That's your thing. Do that. You know, maintaining size and strength. Generally, you don't want to be doing long distance endurance things. Um, so focus more on, you know, those short bursts at 100% of your intensity if you can. Um, just put a little aside there. Have you ever seen a sprinter that wasn't jacked? Uh, I haven't, but yeah, I rest my case there. <laughs> so... Definitely, um, you know, try to take advantage of your ATP, CP energy system. These are, you know, all power athletes. Uh, this is the, the, the time range we, we are in, right? Okay, a little aside here before we're gonna move on to some questions and answers, but um, I just wanted to give a little chart, show you a little chart. Um, I also, um, I teach CPR. And, you know, that's, I love doing that as well. Um, and I go over this all the time, every month with, with everybody that's learning from me, mostly trainers, but, you know, your main focus right now should be making sure your body's healthy and your immunity isn't the best it can be, right? So taking in all those factors, eating right, sleeping right, um, training hard, uh, making sure your cardiovascular system is healthy because, um, we often, you know, with this pandemic thing going on, we think it's the end of the world, but we forget about, you know, this is a chart, I believe it's the last big one that was done in 2016, but it just shows that, you know, cardiovascular disease is the biggest killer in the world. You know, uh, here it was close to 18 million people in 2016. And I think these numbers are quite common and, and um, they, they're pretty much the same every year. There might be some fluctuations, but that being said, a lot of times, you know, it's hereditary, but it's not because a lot of things you can control, they're in your hands. You know, being healthy is a choice. So, you know, right now, really uh, work on trying to be the healthiest version of yourself. We all know where we can improve. I know where I can improve. So I think that should be our main focus. 
All right, so that kind of takes me to the end of my little presentation. Um, so we're gonna probably go into doing some questions and answers here pretty quick. Um, I believe Beth's gonna be popping up to ask me some questions. I'm back. <laughs> All right. There you Russell, are. Thank you. Thank you. This has been great. We've got a lot of questions for you. So, oh boy, um, I'm worried. Quick one. Um, Let me get some water here. Yeah, get some Ooh. water. <laughs> what about recommendations um, for resistance bands? I think you touched upon them a little bit, but yeah. we should talk about it a little bit more. Um, yeah, actually, let's go grab some. <clears throat> Alrighty, so the bands I'm specifically talking about that I like to use. Oh, great, that one's green. <laughs> so it's a green screen. We won't use. That. Uh, we won't use that. Uh, here's the purple version. So the long circular bands. You can often find these on <clears throat> Amazon. There's other. Um, online stores where you can probably find them for strength training equipment inner strength canada i believe holds them a lot of these kind of sell out quick but you might get lucky here and there i have <clears throat> during these times so they're generally um i can't quote you on on the resistance but <laughs> there's the green one again bad choice but um they um they give you kind of a specific amount of weight that of resistance they give you so um, I would say the maximum one you would need is a green for a lot of the stuff that I do, like single arm rows and stuff like that. You can just tie it to a pole and, and use that. Um, it's been pretty awesome. Uh, I mean, I have a setup here in my, my, my home gym, as you can see here. But um, the problem is I don't have all these things like cable machines and I can't do lat pull downs and stuff like that, but I've been able to uh, modify a lot of these exercises with just bands. And to tell you the truth, I'm getting more of a, a, a burn and a pump from it because they're always pulling on you. You know, it's, it's not dead weight. What about an isometric exercise using resistance bands? Someone just pop that in the chat. Yes. Um, well, the thing with the isometric, um, you could use, like I explained before, if you had like a belt, you could even use a towel. I've seen people use towels, but you stand on, I can't really show you right now, but you would stand on the band. Like I have a green band right now, which I can't use to show you. I'll use a purple. You would, you know, put the band together like this and stand on it and then pull as hard as you can, like get it to a resistance where you can't pull any harder and just pull as hard as you can for a short amount of time, five to 10 seconds. And that will give you a pretty good, you know, uh, isometric pull. It's similar to doing a one rep max almost, right? If you can't pull anything, you're going at a hundred percent, then it's a good way to, you know, get your nervous system firing as well. Right. That's great. We had um, quite a few inspiring comments in the chat when you were mentioning at the beginning about not letting age dissuade you from achieving your fitness goals. And yep. we're wondering what you think about, you know, for folks who've been seriously strength training like you have for decades, and as they're moving into more milestone decades, um, how do you suggest dealing with things like injury, nutrition, adaptation in the exercises so that you can continue um, maintaining and managing your muscle mass as you get older. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I mentioned my 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 sensei, uh, Mr. Sakura. He's forty eight. He still looks the same as he did in those pictures, um, and he's kind of been my inspiration. But he, the old concept of being forty, you're just this old old person, dad bod, mum bod, or whatever. That's kind of those concepts are all in your brain all in your mind 
you can really push your body to the limits um, for no matter what age you are. I have clients um, from all ages. Not only last year did I um, do well at Worlds, but I had um, a bunch of my clients come in first place as well in their age group. Um, for example, um, my client John, he's 54 and you know, he, he, he was the strongest 54 year old at that time. And Fred, he's um, 71, 72. Um, he came in and, and he won his age group as well. So I, that's one thing I really enjoy with clients is just showing them that you can do this stuff. Um, even when you're that old, you just gotta, you know, be careful. As I said, their injuries are a thing that happen and they do happen. Um, so really focusing when you're kind of my age, going and getting treatment, like a massage and you know, that can rack up, but I could show you, I have about 10 different um, mobility devices and massage power guns and, and balls and God knows what, <laughs> I mean, anything I can do to try to, you know, be at my 100% and I end up buying something new all the time about a month from a, a powerlifting meet because that's when I'm really feeling banged up and oh this would help me but they do help so acquire things little by little. Sounds like recovery is key. Yes. Um, okay we have some specific questions around body like lats people are asking about lats, uh, lats. body lead, lat, latissimus dorsi like the exercises we can use for our pulling muscles, biceps, especially lats, um, yep. body weight exercises. Well, as I mentioned before in the video uh, with, the, uh, with Eric, um, one thing I didn't want to really say, uh, because right now we're not allowed to go to playgrounds, right? And, and those are awesome places where you could do pull-ups and, and stuff like that. But if you could find somewhere within your property or um, you know, go out to the forest, use a tree, who knows. But another thing on Amazon you could get or you could go, you know, I've done a lot of do-it-yourself stuff right now where I built things out of nothing. So you could probably build uh, a pull-up bar in your basement or somewhere you can order them and that would be the best thing you could do for building your back, right? Your lats, you could do you know, wide grip, close grip for your, your biceps. So those are things you can do simply with a pull-up bar. Um, and then if you do have resistance bands, like I was saying, um, if you tie a green band to a pole and try to do a single arm row, uh, the further you step back and the more tension you have, it's, it's similar to doing probably like a, 80 to 100 pounds on a bent over row, in my opinion. So if you can get some, some of those bands, for example, or a pull-up bar, that would be awesome. Um, yeah. Thank you. Now, what about your nutrition right now? So if you're doing less heavy lifting, folks are wondering um, if you've modified your caloric intake, your macros, and how so? Um, well, yeah, like I said during my um, during my little spiel there, I, you know, I my kind of goal is trying to drop a little weight. It's my off season right now, so um, I've seen the scale at three sixty, and that's kind of scary. But I'm chipping away. I'm under three fifty now. Um, just trying to be in better shape, and so I, I've you know cut down quite a bit. I'm a real big uh, proponent of intermittent fasting I feel or time restricted eating I feel that's the best way to control how many calories you have simply if you skip one meal then you're gonna have a, a thousand less calories in your your system right so if you can hold off longer and try to control yourself that way you're gonna be able to drop weight um, quite a bit and um, yeah, nutritionally, trying to you know, really stick to less calories. I'm not trying to lose a significant amount of weight because I don't want to uh, lose my power, but you know, going along the guidelines of a pound to two pounds a week would be good. Um, yeah. 
Okay, and, and kind of on that actually around yep. even body image, because some folks noticed, you know, you showed us a lot of great personal photos. Thank you. Your body has changed over 30 years visibly. Oh, yeah. And how have you mentally dealt with that? And have you ever felt any external judgment about your body changing? Um, yeah, not, not really. You know what? I, I mean, I've shown you pictures where I was in my best shape and, um, People, you know, I, when I show them older pictures of me when I was, you know, training, they go, oh, wow, you look good there. And I'm like, yeah, we all look good back then. But I've kind of modified my, you know, one of my goals in life was to be uh, a strong man or a power lifter. It's something I was always, always interested in. And I'd really like to emphasize that I am 100% um, steroid free. So I don't take any of that crap. And in order to get big and, and train, you know, to that level, you got to put on some weight. So, you know, eventually I know how to get back to where I was. I don't think I want to get back to 250 anymore. But as I get older, obviously, it's not a good thing to be a giant man. But, hey, being this big has some perks, too. <laughs> Thank you. What about for folks who are older, older than 40, um, who haven't been strength training and they just want to get start, get started. Um, yeah. They see, you know, some of the things that you and have been capable of with your protégés and your coaches and yourself. Yeah. What would you suggest for folks who are just getting started and they're 40 plus? Um, well, I definitely, I mean, it's, uh, you definitely need some expert advice. There is stuff online you could try to find there's programs that you can try to follow, but you definitely need to contact someone that is a uh, professional at what they do. So they know exactly how to set up a plan for you to match your needs. Cause if you don't have that, you know, if you just start following, um, you know, a squat program, like Shmola, you could definitely injure yourself. Um, or even the five, three, one, like if you don't know what you're doing, you don't know where your, your form is correct or not. So definitely need to hire a professional. So whether it be local, um, uh, whether it be locally uh, with your trainer or, you know, contacting someone online that you feel that um, matches your, your, your goals and your personality, that's also key. Making sure you find someone that you want to listen to and be in a relationship with. So Definitely hire a professional. Okay, this is going to be our last question. So in the video you showed uh, a movement where some, Eric was supine and he got to a standing position. What would you suggest just training somebody to get to progress to that movement? Okay, so, um, so he's laying on his back mm -hmm. and he got up. Okay, that's technical get up. Um, I believe this is what you're talking about. Um, that one, it's, it's all technique. It's similar to your, it's basically the same movement as a Turkish getup, if you ever tried that, which is more difficult because you have a weight in your hand. But a technical getup is, um, in, in martial arts, specifically grappling, it, it's a safe way to get up um, when you're on the ground while being able to defend yourself as well because your hand's out, you're guarding yourself. You can still try to kick if you need to. Um, so just learning the proper technique, it is not that hard once you pick it up. I mean, a lot of those things probably look like you'd be uh, impossible to do, but you know, Eric didn't know any of that five years ago. I didn't know any of that. You know, when I started, you just got to, you know, repetition is what I always say to be the best version of yourself. Put in those reps. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Russell. This has been yeah. a phenomenal webinar. We really appreciate your time and uh, energy that you put into putting all this together for us. So there's lots of resources for everyone that's available on the CamFit Pro YouTube channel. Uh, tomorrow, you're also going to get an email with the replay link. And um, we'll just make sure that you connect with, with Russell. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay fit. Take care. You. See you later.